Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. The cost of a house in a town is directly proportional to the size of the house. If a uh, 2850 square foot house costs $182,400, then what is the cost of a uh, 3640 square foot house? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, now before I show you the answer, let's just take one more look at the question. All right, so uh, we have uh, a, you know, a question here that has to deal with the size of a house and uh, the cost of a house, right? So uh, the key to doing this problem is understanding this thing right here, directly proportional, but let's go ahead and read the question one more time. So the cost of a house in a town is directly proportional. Okay, and if you don't know what this means, of course, I'll explain this in one second, but the cost of a house in a town is directly proportional to the size of the house. Now, the size of the house is going to be measured in square feet. So if a 2850 square foot house costs $182,400, then what is the cost of a 3640 square foot house? Okay, so that was the question, or that is the question. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So this 3640 square foot house, let's just real quick, before I show you the answer, okay, let's just kind of use some common sense here. So which house is bigger, okay? The 2850 or the 3640 uh, uh, square foot? Well, obviously the 3640 square foot house is bigger. So do you think it's gonna cost more or less than the 2850 uh, square foot house? Well, if the 2850 square foot house costs $182,400, don't you anticipate that this house should cost more? Well, hopefully, uh, you're like, yes, I think, uh, you know, that is right. Because oftentimes, a lot of people will just, you know, have, you know, they'll do a math problem and they'll have like, oh, the house costs $15. And it just doesn't make sense, right? So make sure your problem or your answer makes sense. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. That house is going to cost uh, $232,960. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, I have to give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in uh, something called direct variation, okay? Because that's what we're talking about, something called, again, uh, this is what we call a variation problem. So directly proportional should uh, have uh, set off a little alarm bells in your brain and be like, hey, I think this is a variation problem. Matter of fact, I think this is a direct variation problem. And if you're like, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, this is not that difficult. And you'll be looking like this person in a couple of minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. And this is something that you absolutely need to understand if you are studying any sort of algebra. All right, so first things first, first we have a lovely math word problem here. And uh, with any word problem, you know, you want to use the rule of three, i.e. read the problem um, at least uh, three times uh, because you can't do anything. You know, if you just read the problem, problem once, you're going to make an error, okay? Or at least you're going to have a high probability that you didn't, uh, you know, understand all the aspects of the problem. Now, I already kind of read it a couple of times already, so most of you out there get what's going on. But as you read through this problem, you have to understand, you know, any kind of math terminology that math terminology that may be going on. And of course, we have this uh, uh, term or you know this terminology directly proportional. If you don't know what this means, well, you're not going to be able to do this type of problem. Okay, so. Uh, we're going to go ahead and figure out what this means in just one second, and then uh, we're going to go through a process to solve these type of problems. So 
a lot of what's going on in this particular situation is uh, kind of like pattern recognition. So when you study a lot of math, you know, you'll just learn how to solve various types of problems, okay? So when you see the word directly proportional, again, that's going to indicate that we have a variation problem. And let's go to talk about uh, that right now. Okay, so as I indicated, we are talking about something called variation. Okay, this is very, very important. And there's three types of variations uh, that you need to learn about. I'm only going to be, um, I'm only to going to be talking about direct variation, but there's uh, uh, one that's called uh, things that could be inversely proportional. Okay, so inverse variation, and then there's something called joint variation. So when you study this topic of variation, all right, you know, there's two other uh, types. Okay, and they kind of work somewhat uh, similar to what we're going to be doing here. But let's just talk about what is this concept of variation. Well, variation doesn't it sound like maybe like, hey, how something may vary with something else. Well, yes, indeed. And let me go ahead and give you a simple little kind of, uh, uh, you know, example of what we're talking about. So here is my little sketch of a pot. OK, so you're like a pot. And let's suppose we have a little fire down here. And this pot has a little cover on it. OK, and let's say we have some water in here or something like that. OK, all right. Now, what is going to happen, we just put this pot, it has water on it, we have our cover on the pot, and this water is nice and cold because we haven't put the stove on yet. But what happens when we turn on the fire on the stove? Okay, or if you have an electric stove, you turn that on as well. Okay, so as we start to heat up this pot, okay, as the temperature starts to go up, what's going to happen to the pressure inside the pot okay well if you're saying well mr youtube math man that's pretty easy if we increase the temperature on this pot okay the pressure is going to build up in this pot well you're absolutely right see the relationship between the temperature and the pressure here or we call directly related okay directly proportional in other words uh, as temperature goes up pressure goes up as well okay so they're going in the same direction this is an example of a direct variation kind of situation in math okay so that's what direct variation is more or less let's take a quick look at uh, inverse variation although i'm not doing a problem like this in this uh you know video uh just so we can get a better understanding of uh, variation so uh let me see here uh oh here's a good little example i think this will work so let's suppose this is a nice little balloon okay so here we have the pressure in a balloon let's say this balloon is kind of you know it's static maybe it's like i don't know uh, 12 inches in diameter so here is the pressure and here's the volume of the balloon right so that makes sense to me now let's say that we uh take this balloon and we start squeezing it in Okay, we're like, we just get our hands and we start kind of smashing it in and we're going to make the balloon like smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, what are we doing? Well, we're actually lowering the volume. Okay, we're, we are reducing the volume of this balloon. Well, when that happens, what happens to the pressure inside of the balloon? Well, the pressure is going to do what? It's going to increase, right? And it's going to increase to the point that we're going to you know, the balloon's gonna blow up, right? So this is an example where one thing goes down, another thing goes up. Now, of course, there's countless examples of, you know, this type of relationship, but these are real world type of relationships. And the, uh, the model here, mathematical models, is called variation, right? So there's direct variation, inverse variation, and then there's something called joint variation. Okay, now when you recognize a problem as being directly proportional. Okay, this word right here, directly proportional, indicates that you're dealing with a direct variation situation. Now, it makes sense here because what's going on is that the size of the house is directly proportional to the cost. So in other words, as we build a bigger house, as the size goes up, hey, so does the cost of the house. That makes sense, right? Okay, uh, now let's get into this formula here and how to solve these type of problems. Okay, so you need to know this uh, basic formula. This is not that difficult. So y varies directly to x. This is how we will look at this direct variation situation. So y is varying directly to x. 
And uh, in this particular type of variation problem, we need to know what this thing is right here. This is the key to doing this problem, this K. This K is a number. It's just a constant, okay, constant, meaning it's a value. It doesn't change, right? So it's just a number, but it's what we call the constant of variation. We need to find this constant of variation in our particular problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually write a direct variation model, okay? Now, what do you think uh, we can compare, uh, you, know, um, you know, what two variables can we compare in this particular word problem? Well, the cost of the house uh, directly varies to, with the size of the house. As size goes up, so does the cost, right? So the size is measured in square feet, and the cost is measured in dollars. So what we need here is the constant of variation, this K, it's a number, in order to solve this problem. But really what we need is the actual kind of formula for the situation, and then we can answer any uh, question related to this problem. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And now let's go ahead and get into exactly how to find uh, that uh, constant of variation. So the cost of a house in a town is directly proportional to the size of the house. So we're like, oh, this is a direct variation problem. So we're thinking y equals kx, and we're going to build ourselves a nice little kind of specific uh, direct variation formula. Okay, so instead of y and x, we're going to uh, replace that y with c and x with s. That just makes sense to us, right? So the cost is directly uh, proportional to the size. So in other words, the cost and size are in direct variation. All right, now the objective here is first, we have to find that constant of variation. And we can find this very easily if we have a um, uh, an example of the cost and size. Okay, so algebraically, we can solve for K if we actually have, you know, um, uh, some information about the cost and size in this particular model, and we do, okay? It's pretty straightforward stuff, and these problems work pretty similar when uh, these variation type problems. So here is what we have, right? So our cost varies directly with the size, so C equals KS. Again, we're looking to solve for K. Now, we can use this information in the problem to solve for K. So if a 2850 square foot house, okay, cost $182,400, well, that is the secret information for us to figure out what K is equal to, okay? Because we can plug in for the cost, this part, the actual cost of this house, and we know the actual size of the house, okay? So here we have the cost of the house and the size of the house. So uh, we have this variable K, so uh, right here in front of the size. So algebraically, we can solve for K. So 182,400 equals K times uh, 2850. And what we're looking for, again, is this general formula. All right, now hopefully you're all with me. So let's go ahead and solve for k. Uh, we're talking about basic algebra here. So to solve for k, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2850. All right, so I have my k on this uh, uh, particular circumstance, the variables on the right-hand side. I like to see it on the left, but we'll just make it nice and easy because we could simply divide both sides of the equation by 2850. So we have 182,400 divided by 2850. That will give us our k value. And when we do that lovely math, we get k is equal to 64. Okay, so now we uh, kind of plug this into our actual uh, direct variation formula. So instead of the cost equal the constant of variation times the size, we actually have the specific formula that we need in order to figure out any situation uh, in this particular town in terms of the cost of the house and the size of the house. So the cost is going to be equal to 64. That's our constant times the size. Okay, so that's what we need to take the next step. And let's go to take that next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you just love the way I sneak that in? Well, listen, it is my goal to try to deliver the best math content that I can think of. And I scour over all types of problems. Uh, you know, I try to make math interesting. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like math. I know that you find that very shocking. You might be, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? There's people that don't like math. Well, yes, matter of fact, <laughs> a lot of people do. When you say the word math, uh, there's a lot of people with math phobia. They're like, math, you know, don't, I don't want to hear about math. Well, here's the deal, okay? Uh, some of you have no choice but to learn math. But others of you may kind of like just not have a good relationship with math. And if you struggle with math in the past, oftentimes, okay, matter of fact, 
there's a, a better than a 50% chance that it wasn't like all your fault. Okay. You need to uh, not, uh, you know, your, your self-talk, all right. And I hate to get into a personal development type here, but self-talk, the way we talk to ourselves really has a tremendous impact on how, how well we're going to do in anything. If your self-talk talk is, you know, I'm bad at math. Uh, some teacher way back in 1972 told me I was bad. So therefore I must be bad. You got to really just let all that go. I'm telling you right now, and I'm being very sincere, that 99.9% .9 of you can be very successful in mathematics. But if you have negative self-talk, you know, if you're like saying, I'm bad at math, I'm bad at math, and maybe your track record is not stellar, okay? But don't look at that previous track record. Uh, that track record is you trying to learn math at the same time as you, you, know, you having this self-talk that I'm bad at math, okay? You cannot do well in math if at the same time or you can't learn math at the same if the at the same time you're saying I'm bad at math. You know they're just, you know, uh, you know it's like a positive canceling out with a negative, right? So to learn truly learn math, what you have to do is be willing to put in the effort at the time and find a math teacher that inspires you. Okay, that makes the subject a little bit more tolerable, and that's what I try to do. But I need your support, and if you need help in mathematics like direct variation, joint variation. Well, then check out my main math courses. You'll find links to all of those in the description. So this kind of stuff that we're talking about here, I teach in my Algebra 1. I'm pretty sure in my Algebra 1, definitely in my Algebra 2. And, of course, uh, if you're at that level, you can check out my pre-calculus course as well. If you're at, uh, if you're not a student, go and check out my math skill rebuild a course that will really help you out. But let's get back to this problem and make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well. Thank you so much for giving me a little bit of time to telling you or t being able to tell you why I do, you know, the things that I do on my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. So hopefully this is going to be pretty obvious in terms of what we're going to do. So we did all this work to figure out this model here. This is our direct variation model. So the cost of a home is going to be equal to 64 times the size of the home. Now, the cost will be in dollars, and the size is in square feet. So the question is what? Well, the question was then, what is the cost of a 36, 40-square-foot house? Well, this is very easy. All we have to do is plug that in right here. The cost is going to be 64 times the square footage of the house. So we just simply plug it in. So 64 times 36, 40 gives us... $232,960. All right, now, uh, this concept of variation, again, is really critical, and it comes up not only in math, but in interesting courses like physics and science. So uh, if you like science, well, the language of science is math, okay? But hopefully, you got something out of this video, and if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe, and with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.